Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm just here on the motion to suppress. I thought you were here on a motion to withdraw. I mean, motion to withdraw. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong court. Sorry, motion to withdraw, definitely. Okay, now I can hear you. All right. You are allowed to log off. I do need you to stay All right, Ms. Smith. Your attorney needs to contact you, okay? My uh, attorney. Ms. Smith, can you unmute? Yes. You? All right, Ms. Smith. Yes, uh, your attorney has filed a motion to withdraw. She's saying yes, that judge. you wish to hire another attorney. Is that true? Yes. All right. When are you planning on having another attorney? Um, I wanted I wanted to get a court appointed attorney. All right. All right, Miss Corley, you're excused. Uh, is that uh, also Ms. me? Ms. No, Miss Smith, you're to remain on the Zoom. Miss Ferguson, can you see if we can get a court appointed attorney for Miss Smith, please? And Miss Corley, you're excused. Okay, thank you, Judge. You're welcome. You're to remain on the Zoom, Miss uh, Smith. Okay. All right, Miss uh, Guerrero on Hannah Smith. Yes, Your Honor. All right. This is what the, the court has discovered from reviewing the filings. Yes, a motion was filed where this defendant was allowed to have the remote uh, in-home monitor installed in the ignition interlock with an affidavit of non-driving. So she's not supposed to be driving because she's using the in-home. So what she has done is she's violated her conditions of bond. So she's driving and she's supposed to have, uh, she's not supposed to be driving. Okay. Um, as far as I understand, I, I asked her about having a valid driver's license. I didn't ask her about the difference between the ignition interlock and the, and the um, home, help, home handheld device. I'm sure that she would be more than amenable to have that ignition interlock placed on her vehicle. I do understand that there was an accident and her vehicle was um, not working, but I, maybe she has a new vehicle. I, I didn't get all those details, Your Honor. All right, so that's that's the, what the court has, and that was dated on September 8, 2020. And the court doesn't have an order that's saying that she's gonna be driving with ignition interlock. In my understanding, she doesn't have ignition interlock on her vehicle and she should. Okay. So she's gonna be going into custody today. She violated her conditions of bond. I can't have someone. And Ms. Smith, I don't take it as true that you committed an intoxication manslaughter but you're charged with intoxication manslaughter. And one of your conditions was because your attorney, your previous attorney came to me and informed me that you would not be driving. And so I allowed you to have the in-home monitoring device installed in lieu of ignition interlock if an affidavit of non-driving was provided. So you're driving and you don't have an ignition interlock. That's a problem. So uh, you're going to be taken into custody today. Ms. Guerrero, she'll be remanded without bond. Uh, if you want to file a motion to um, have the court reconsider that or bring some more information uh, to me, Ms. Guerrero, of course, the court will be more than um, willing to consider that. But for now, she is, uh, I'm issuing a judge's warrant and she's going to be remanded. Okay. I'll, I'll visit with her tomorrow through the jail and uh, I'll report back. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you. May I be excused? You may be excused. I've already conferred with Jason uh, Jorgens. Mm -hmm. Monica Godetto is the attorney of record. Uh, Monica has had an uh, opportunity to convey the offer. Mm -hmm. Today is a plea deadline. We have a uh, discovery that we've been showing Ms. Smith that Monica has had trouble. She wants one week to extend the plea deadline to the 30th. She's going to go to the but because they put the barricade up, attorneys have had to wait sometimes three hours 
for an escort to get to through the barrier and to annex. We're just asking one week to recall it. All right, Ms. Burgess, can you recall this for next week? What date? The 30th, please. Yes, sir. All right, we'll see you back on the 30th. If there's an issue at the jail with visitation, just let the court know. Yes, Judge. Smith versus Hannah Marie Smith. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Gorgans for the state. Defense? Monica, get out of Ms. Smith. And are you Ms. Smith? Yes, ma'am. Uh, counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Uh, Ms. Smith, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? No, Your Honor. We're proceeding on the count two charge of manslaughter and waiving counts one, three, and four. No objection. All right, Ms. Smith, I'm going to show you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand you're charged with the offense of manslaughter? That's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? She has, Your Honor. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Smith, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page, did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, the state is proceeding on count two. They're waiving counts one, three, and four. Punishments be assessed at six years in the prison, and there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal Paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counselor, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offenses charged in count two, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. The state offers exhibit one the defendant's waivers and stipulation evidence. No objection, Your Honor. Ms. Smith, I'm showing you what's entitled Waiver and Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting yeah. evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments, and the court will review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence uh, to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Judge, may I clarify one of my responses in response to your question about motions? Yes. I said that I hadn't filed any, I'm not sure if Ms. Corney did, so I don't want to represent to the court because I think she may have filed some evidentiary motions. I did file some non-evidentiary motions, but I wanted to make sure that if Ms. Corney did, I didn't represent that there were none filed. 
All right. And I can tell you from my review of the, the court's docket sheet that um, there was no um, motions that were heard. Okay. And there were some motions that were filed. But uh, none that were heard. I just didn't want to make any misrepresentation. All right. So the court is finding you uh, guilty of count two. Are you proceeding with uh, sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? On behalf of my client, Judge, this is a case that, that was a tribal type case based upon the evidence that you reviewed. My client has made the decision to come in and accept responsibility for her portion of this accident that happened. She's extremely remorseful. She wants to get this behind her and she wanted to say her apologies to the family that the area where this happened, the location was very dark and she just didn't see that there was an accident in front of her. Um, she has Graves disease and she's been pretty ill at the jail. Um, so she's hoping that this time will pass and hopefully that she can get her life back together. She was a home health care provider and she did help a lot of people while she was out in the bed. All right, anything from the state? All right, anything you wish to say, Ms. Smith? I'm sorry, please be clear. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what they lost. <laughs> All right. Anything else from either side? No, you're on. All right. I'm going to follow your agreement. I'm going to sentence you to six years in the prison and give you um, credit for any time served. Uh, I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that? with your attorney did you understand it and did you sign it yes ma'am all right because this is a plea bargain agreement because i followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waived your right to appeal you do not have the court's permission to appeal do you understand yes, ma'am. all right because this is a felony conviction you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition if you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is you need to speak to an attorney do you understand yes all right we can go off the record um so Ms. Smith, there's going to be a victim impact statement. What I can tell you is I know that sometimes emotions and tempers run high because in this court, we'll deal, as your counsel will tell you, and the state will, will tell you, we're dealing with serious cases, major felonies. And, but I do require that everyone treats everybody with respect and kindness. So um, there are some uh, persons who want to say something to you. Just listen, internalize it, okay? <laughs> Egg. The video ended here. This clip was actually saved by itself. It started with Miss Smith and ended with Miss Smith, so we do not get to hear the victim impact statement. I can understand why it wasn't left for the public to see, but in some ways I also feel like it could have helped the public in some ways.